Now, I know it's not here yet, but Christmas is just around the corner. And in today's episode, I want to give you a video packed full of ideas and inspiration using products from the Dollar Tree. In this episode, you're going to find 35 fresh new ideas to try. Now, let's head to the Dollar Tree to grab our supplies and let's get crafting. You will see so many of these type of deers on high-end websites. Pottery Barn, even Target, they sell these for anywhere between $15 to $30. They had them at the dollar plus section for $5. So I'm gonna take some of the picks and frosted glitter stems from the Dollar Tree and a piece of this foam square and I'm going to cut it down to size so that I can glue it to the base inside of the deer's legs. Now I'm going to use some E6000 because I don't always trust just hot glue by itself. So I'm going to use my little key tool here. I love this tool. I had a subscriber send it to me a while ago where I can basically just twist it and it'll allow me to always keep the pressure in my E6000 and then I'll be able to, you know, get out the amount I need put the cap back on, add some hot glue, and pop it into place. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of these leaves from one of the picks and I'm going to kind of build up the base a little bit because I don't want to see this foam. We want to make sure we're covering it with as much greenery as we possibly can. So I'm going to add in first those green leaves, then I'm going to come in with this silver frosty looking pick that looks like twigs, but it has glitter. Then I'm gonna add in some frosted berries and some beautiful, vibrant red berries. And anytime the berries get in the way, I do kind of pull a little bit off on the end just to make sure I have a nice, good imprint into the foam and I can hot glue it into place without them popping out over time. Now, this next step is optional. You can put in what, honestly, whatever you want. I am going to be using a pick that I had on hand. It's actually a long garland strand I get from Hobby Lobby whenever they have it on sale for their greenery long garlands. And I'm simply just going to cut off a couple pieces and pop those in because I really love how boxwood looks with Christmas berries and some moss in there. And at this point you can see adding all this extra texture in there really does just bring it to life and makes it look real. I think that's the thing I love most about using faux greenery. When you start blending different types of them together that complement each other, it looks so beautiful and high-end on a strict budget. For this craft, we're going to be using some nautical rope, some that's already been untwisted and some that's twisted, some greenery, some ticking stripe fabric, white burlap, which is actually my favorite to work with around the Christmas season, two gold jingle bells, and then one of these frosted berry picks. All of these things have come from the Dollar Tree except for the fabric. Now I'm going to take my white burlap and I'm going to layer it about six times so that when I do this little hand cut out you can see here that I'm just tracing around my hand with a sharpie marker to create a mitten pattern and I want to be able to create six of them at the same time so I'm just gonna cut the fabric and I'm making it where you know the edges don't have to be perfect because we wanted to have that rustic country charm so we're just cutting off any extra that's bulky and causing any issues to cut it and then once I've got those all cut out I'm gonna need six of them because I like to take three for one side and three for the other mitten the other side and the reason why I do this because burlap itself has a little bit of a hole to it it's woven really loosely and so sometimes the batting pops through so I make sure that I'm putting the batting towards the back side of those two gloves so the front side has two gloves to kind of prevent the batting from wanting to poke through. Now I'm just gluing it together and massaging the burlap to make sure that it's nice and glued so that it's not coming apart on the sides. And once I've got that done, 
I glued the two gloves together. You can see that I've kind of brought one down a little bit lower than the other one and then I added in some greenery and now I'm adding on with that untwisted nautical rope left over from another project. I'm just tying that around to cinch up the wristband of the glove. Now, you could leave it like this, but I really love the idea of fraying it, just making it look more rustic country charm for Christmas. And then I'm just going to glue them down in place because I like things to stay where I put them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take my nautical rope that's still twisted, and I'm going to glue that inside of the two gloves. And the reason why I love that is because we'll be able to hang it up somewhere on a hook or a doorknob or a door, whatever you want to put it on. And now I'm just going to add in some of these berries. I think the berries bringing in that pop of red with green just has that traditional, beautiful Christmas look to it. So once I've got that in place, I'm going to add on those two gold jingle bells and I'm just using hot glue. I like to make sure that when I do glue with metal, there is some kind of an opening on the metal to be able to get the glue in to lock all into place. So the part where you can add some string, I'm putting glue into that hole and then putting the bells on the glove. Now at this point you can leave it as is, but again I'm going for that country rustic primitive charm. I'm going to go ahead and just distress these with some brown paint. I'm just lightly brushing it on, going back over, adding on several different layers, and then for the bells, to give it a rustic look, I'm just simply taking some of that brown paint and tapping it on certain spots and corners and adding some to that greenery pick. Now the last thing I'm going to do is add some frost. I'm taking Mod Podge and I'm just tapping a nice thick clumpiness of it onto the gloves on the spots that frost or snow would fall on them and I'm adding first a chunkier glitter and then I'm adding a sugar glitter. This really just makes it look so beautiful and frosty. This next project is going to be using two foam squares and these four adorable wood cutout signs. Now these are meant for outside in your garden, but truly friends, I would not put these out in the rain or the snow because after a while they do fall apart. But we're going to make an adorable, whimsical, high-end, expensive looking door wreath. And it's really more like a door sign because you'll see it's not round like a wreath. But regardless, so you can see that I popped off all three of the snowman, the elf, and the reindeer. And I'm going to take an extra one of those sticks. And I'm going to just glue two of them together to get the length that we need. Use two zip ties to secure it even more. And then with my butter knife that I keep in my craft room, I'm just cutting those foam squares in half. Then I'm going to take some hot glue and glue those three foam squares down really securely onto those sticks that came off of the other signs. Now at this point you can use whatever florals or greenery picks you want. I had these really beautiful red peonies that I wanted to put on because I loved the texture. I just thought they looked so pretty and I went around the sides of the foam. Now I'm going to take my cute little signs and I'm going to start gluing those kind of zigzagging them back and forth and the reason why I did the snowman second and the reindeer third is because I didn't want the red and the red on the hats of the reindeer and Santa to be too close to each other. I wanted to mix it up to have that black in between and have the stripe on the bottom. Now I'm going to take some of this green mesh. I cut out a long strip, folded it in half and then did a simple not. I just looped around my finger and pulled it through. This makes it look like a bow without going through the efforts of struggling with making a bow with these things. I feel like the mesh netting stuff is so 
tricky to work with. The sides kind of stick to each other. So I like doing it this way and you get the volume of a bow without all the effort. Now I'm gonna just simply glue three of those in place to add in some fun color. And I'm gonna do that same technique with the bow where I just fold it in half, tie a knot with this glitter ribbon. Beware, this stuff is a mess from this glitter ribbon. It, it like blew up glitter everywhere. You can see right below, but it's so pretty and it adds that pizzazz and sparkle to this front door wreath that we're making. So I decided to go with it. You can avoid this one if you don't like glitter. You can use a different ribbon if you would like. So I'm going to just add those ribbons on the sides. And now I'm going to come in with these red berries and fill them in even more, adding some more texture and just more dimension to this beautiful home decor piece. This is just such an easy, fun project. And it really just has such a wow statement on a door. So once you've got all those berries popped into place, I'm going to add a little country charm and add on this gingham bow at the top and the bottom, making sure I add in some more of that cute texture for Christmas. And then on the back, I'm going to just simply flip it over, take some twine to create a hook so that I can hang it up on my door. And that's it. It's ready to be displayed. This ornament is so whimsical and downright adorable. I'm going to use a small terracotta pot, a round wood ball that's flat on one side so you can see it sitting there nice and flat, some fabric, and then I'm going to pull out some buttons. I happen to have these star buttons on hand that I picked up from Joann's a couple years back, and I'm pretty sure they still have them. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out three of them, and then we're going to start with adhering the wood ball to the bottom of the terracotta pot and I'm using a combo of E6000 that'll lock that wood and terracotta together and a hot glue. The hot glue will hold it in place while the E6000 is drying. Then I painted it white and I'm going to come back in with a small scrap of fabric. I'm going to use this red and white ticking stripe fabric. I just love this fabric and I'm kind of using it a lot this Christmas season just because I think it has that country charm that I adore. So you can see here I'm going around the neck part of my little snowman ornament and I'm just wrapping around that fabric to create a darling little scarf. I folded it in half to add a little bit more texture to the bottom of the scarf and then I'm just going to cut off any extra that I don't need that's hanging down too long. Once I've got the scarf on, now we're going to move on to the hat. I've got another piece of fabric and you're going to see here that I'm actually like flipping it around a bunch of different ways trying to decide which way I like the fabric to be closest to the face. I'm going to make a line across the forehead and then I'm going to make a straighter line across the back because I don't want it to come too far down where it's going to make the hat pull backwards. You can see here that it's kind of pinched towards the top like this. I want the fabric to be as straight as we can towards the top, but I want it to also kind of go back a little bit at the forehead. So. I'm now going to just lock in both sides with my hot glue, pull it up, and you can see at the top, if you've got this oval type shape at the top of your fabric, you're in good shape. Now we're gonna take the scissors and we're going to just do little snips all over it, the very top of that fabric. It's gonna look like a cute little spiky hairdo. And then I'm going to take some twine, tuck it down in there and glue it into place because this is gonna be how our ornament hangs up because once we tie the hat together, you won't really be able to get that in there. So now I'm gonna take some red yarn and I'm going to just do a double knot 
off to the side of the hat, pulling all of those little fibers together into the middle so it's got that pom-pom at the top of a winter hat. Make sure your string is nice and straight still. And then once you've got that knotted in place, you're gonna wanna cut off any extra of the yarn if it's too long. And you could embellish the hat a little bit if you want to, if you wanna take it that extra step. But I decided I love the hat because it was already so busy with the fabric. Now we're gonna go ahead and add on those buttons down the snowman's tummy. And this would be such a cute project around the base or that rim of the terracotta pot towards the bottom. You could customize it and put names for each grandchild or family member. Now we're gonna just simply add on a face and a little bitty nose. And at this point, it is the cutest ornament I think I've ever crafted here on my channel. All right, this next project, I'm taking three of the stacking block toys from the Dollar Tree, and I am going to glue them so they stay in the form of the tall tower. Now, the easiest way to do this is I'm just simply taking glue, zigzagging back and forth, and continuing that pattern, gluing them on layer by layer until I get to the very top. Now, the reason why we're gonna need three of these stacking block toys is because we are going to be making three different individual figurines for Christmas. The very first one, we're gonna be using all of the blocks completely. For the second one, we are going to almost use them all, but leave six behind, six rows, because those six rows are gonna be added on to the third one. So we will be able to have a small, medium, and large of these stacking blocks. And it is going to be able to just do the cutest project ever. So once you've got all of those glued and locked into place, you can see the three different sizes. Go ahead and paint all three of them a nice coat of white paint. Now I'm really just kind of gooping it in there because I want to make sure I fill in as much as the cracks as possible. And then once that's all dry, I'm going to take some brown paint and I'm going to start lightly brushing on my first layer of brown paint. This is to add a little bit more of a taupey color, but I still want that white popping through. Then we're gonna come in with the next layer of brown paint and I'm getting a little bit heavier with my brush strokes, but you can see that I'm staying on the bottom rounded corners of this stacking tower and then only on the corners of it. And this is because I want to keep the white in the middle really showing through. Then I'm coming back in for my third layer of brown paint, and I'm really at this point starting to cake on quite a bit more, and I'm even bringing in my finger to dabble on some more. Now at this point, I set it aside. It's dry, I use my dry heat gun to dry it really quickly, and I'm gonna take this round wood piece and I'm going to paint it red. This particular stacking tower is going to be our Rudolph. Once the red nose is complete, go ahead and just glue that on. Not so much in the middle, just a little bit higher. And then I went outside, I found a couple of twigs that I thought looked really great like antlers, and I'm just going to glue those into place. This part is so fun. When you start to bring all the personality to these stacking towers, they just become so adorable. Now I've got these little wood round half bumps and I just picked those up from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to just simply paint two of them black. This is going to become the eyes for our Rudolph. Once the eyes have been painted black and they're dry, go ahead and glue them into place. Be careful not to put too much glue it will push out on the sides, which is what I had happen here. And then I'm gonna just take the back of my brush and add on two little white dots for its eyes. 
And then I'm going to create like a frosty look at the top of Rudolph's nose. So I'm going to add on a couple little dots in different sizes. And then this kind of shiny, it's a dot and I'm dragging in a little bit. It adds a little bit of a shiny glare. So it looks like the nose is rounded more. Once that's all drying and done, I'm going to move on to the top of Rudolph's head. And I'm going to add on some of this brown mossy grass that I get from the Dollar Tree. It is extremely messy, but I love this stuff for Christmas decorating and I just think it's so cute. All right, now we're gonna put Rudolph to the side and we are gonna move on to Frosty, Frosty the Snowman. Again, I apologize, my voice is so hoarse in this video. I wish it was not, but I've taken about a week trying to get it to heal and it is just taking a lot longer than I had thought and I just decided I'm gonna get back to filming because friends, Crafting is so therapeutic for me, so here's hoping that this video and doing these projects just helps my voice clear up a little bit more. Who knows? Anyway, I'm just going to take some cute fabric. You can customize whatever fabric you want, and I'm just going to wrap it around the top of the stacking blocks for our Frosty the Snowman. I'm going to use some red yarn, wrap it around, tie a knot, cut those extra long strands off I don't want and then the very top of his little beanie cap I'm gonna just take my scissors and cut and fray it some I want it to look really floofy floofy there's a word for you that I like to use actually quite a bit <laughs> anyway so I'm just gonna cut in some little snips on the top of that and once that is all in place I'm gonna go ahead and take three more of those half round circles and paint them black glue them into place for frosty's coal and then with my white burlap i cut a thin strip and i wrapped it around like a scarf and now remember burlap really does let that hot glue pop right through so sometimes you might want to use a finger protecting guard from hot glue or a popsicle stick to push it down into place so you don't burn your hand now I'm going to take my thin brush and I'm going to paint on kind of a goofy smile. You can see that there's this little piece of burlap that is kind of rubbing funny into the spot. And I was trying really hard to not have it drag. And I was trying to like remove it. And then there's this one point where I try to cut it and it's still there. So then eventually I go back to try to paint it again and it's still there. <laughs> At this point, I find it, and I pop it out, and it's gone. So, just know that I have my moments where things kind of go wrong with my DIYs too, and I just, I stay patient and calm until I get it to work. Then I'm going to give him some eyes, and at this point we need to give him a nose. I went and got one of these long skewer sticks, and I'm going to just simply cut down a piece that I think is the right length for his nose, and then once that's trimmed, I'm just going to glue it into the spot that I want it to be. And I do go back later to paint it orange, but I did forget to add that part in. So just know that I did do a burnt orange color for the carrot nose. Now at this point, Frosty needs some arms. And I happen to have a large pile of really cute sticks outside my craft door because I work down in my basement and it's right next to my gardening area. So I went on out there, I found some cute twigs for his arms and I glued them into place. Now at this point I added a couple little berries and some moss at the top of his head and it just looks so cute. Now again I'm going to put that one to the side because now we're moving on to the third one. The third one is going to be Santa. Now if you don't have beige a creamy color on hand all you gotta do is just take white a little bit of brown and a little bit of orange and it will make beige so at this point I'm going to do another one of those round circles this is going to be Santa's face and I'm going to glue it into place and you can see that I'm almost towards the top of that stacking block because Santa's going to be nice and tall this is the tallest of the three Rudolph is the shortest, Frosty, Frosty's the second, the middle, and Santa's the tallest. Now at this point, I'm just painting on some red stripes. You do not have to make this look perfect. Those red stripes, you want them to be 
where you can see the white down the middle, but you can tell that I kept it rough because I wanted to kind of go with this rustic charm of this video and this particular project. So you can see that my red line is not perfect and that's okay. Now I'm gonna take some ticking stripe fabric. I'm going to glue that onto place that I want it to be. And then I'm going to just take it and wrap it around. You wanna make sure your sand is nice and straight before you start wrapping the fabric. And then I'm going to just take it, wrap it around the back and glue that all into place. And then what we're gonna do, this next part, it's not really tricky, but I'm gonna to try to show you as clearly as I can just so that you can see what I did. So I'm gonna glue this last part into place and then the fabric at the top, we're not going to cut it. We want it to be a little bit long. I'm gonna take it, I'm going to pinch it and I'm going to twist it and pull it down to the side. This is going to create that part of Santa's hat that's hanging over to the side of his head. And then in a few minutes, we're gonna add on the little fuzzy pom-pom ball at the end. And I'm just gonna just kind of work with the hat, move the fabric around so that I get that nice rounded curve at the top. Now I'm going to add on another one of those half circles and I'm gonna paint that the beige color as well, this taupey color, not taupey, but a tan color. I'm gonna add on two little dots for the eyes. And again, there is a little piece of burlap. You can see it right there when I pull it. Oh, it made Santa look angry. I kind of laughed at this point. And then I just took my tan color and I went back in and tapped it. So again, things happen here on my channel that don't always work out perfectly and I just stay calm and patient until I get it to resolve the problem. And now I'm going to just add some dots down Santa Claus's tummy for the buttons. And now at this point, I think this is probably my favorite part of the Santa. I'm taking some more of that white burlap and I cut out two rough looking beards. I want them to look rough. One's a little bit smaller than the other one. I'm also gonna make sure that my dots are really dried because you do not want the burlap to bump those and then smudge them. So once those are dry, I'm gonna add some hot glue and you can see the shape of this beard. I did not trace it, I just was kind of freehanding it. There's a scoop in the middle and then kind of a point to make that beard look. And now I'm just gonna smush that on there so that it looks like Santa's beard. And where it gets cute is when you add on the second beard. The first one is a little too see-through. I didn't like that, and I knew I wanted to add a second one. And I'm just trimming up the sides to make sure the sides are extra pointy on this one. And then at this point, isn't it just so adorable? I love this little beard. It is so cute. If you're thinking of making a Santa, try doing a burlap beard. I think it is just adorable. Now I'm gonna take some of this fuzzy fabric. I'm gonna wrap that around at the base of the hat, right above Santa's eyes. And I do want it to kind of go down into the beard area to conceal that side a little bit. And then I'm gonna just simply wrap it around to the back, cut off any extra that I don't need and then glue it all into place. Now for the ball, I'm taking a little ball scrap piece of the fabric. I put it in the middle of this rectangle shaped fabric and I'm, I'm doing it so it makes it a little bit thicker. And I'm just gonna keep working with the fabric and pulling it tight and pinching it to make it look like a ball as much as possible. You could make a yarn pom-pom ball, but honestly, that's a lot of work and this is much easier. So once I'm done, I'm gonna take that little pom-pom and add that to the side where I twisted the fabric down. Now at this point, Santa needs a little bit of an embellishment, so I'm adding on some greenery and some cute berries. And then, now we can leave these like this. They are all so cute. Or we can add a little frost. I know that not everybody loves glitter, so skip this part if you don't like it, but Friends, I love a traditional country Christmas, so I'm gonna add some Mod Podge, a nice thick goopy amount on all three of them in their own different areas, 
and then I'm going to come in with a chunky glitter. And again, skip this part if you don't like it. If you want to avoid the glitter, I totally get it. I will not say anything about it. We are still, we will still be friends, but I love a little glitter. So I'm adding it to the top of Santa's hat, the bottom of Frosty the Snowman, and then also to the top of Frosty's hat. And then on Rudolph, I'm going to do it to the top of the nose and the antlers. And I, I like the two different glitters because I feel like you've got that chunky glitter and then the frosted um, sprinkle glitter where it's just sugar glitter. That's what it's called. Sugar glitter together combined. They just look so cute. The Mod Podge is going to dry clear and then you're going to have this beautiful sparkle on these specific parts. It looks like they're out in the snow having a good time during the Christmas season. Now all together they make the cutest set. You can do them individually but I just loved all three of them together. So once I've got my last of my glitter on, everybody is frosted. They are all ready to be displayed together. So whether you make one or three, I hope you enjoy this one. If you enjoy home decor, you might also enjoy this video that I put over on my Heidi Sobel home channel. It is the Christmas tour of my home, showing all the different things that I did to decorate. I really love Christmas and I go all out on that holiday just because I love to celebrate the Savior's birth and bring that spirit of Christ into my home. I'll make sure to link that video at the end of this video and it's down below in my description box as well here in the cards. All right. We're going to do this advent calendar for a major look for less. I loved the idea that I saw with these little stars that you can flip back and forth and they actually have these wood cutouts at the Dollar Tree as well as twine. We're going to use some clear push pins and then this bamboo board that they have in the dollar plus section. We are going to take a ruler and we're going to use the centimeters versus inches because it works out better for spacing. And I am going to hit at the 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 measurements. Then I'm going to come in with my push pins and I'm going to gently hammer those into place. You don't want to be too rough because it could crack the top part of the push pin. I had that happen a couple times. If it does, you just lift it back up and take it out. Then I'm going to take the stars using my crocodile and I'm going to punch holes in each one. I love my crocodile tool. I talk about it all the time here on my channel. And then I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to fold it in half, taking the part of the twine that is folded in half. I'm going to use a paintbrush to push that through the hole. I'm going to open that loop from the twine and then I'm going to pull through the ends. Now the reason why I like doing it this way is that if you just go through with the twine one strand through, the stars will constantly keep twisting and they'll never lay flat. So doing this loop is going to allow the stars to lay flat on the board without them twisting back and forth and it looks really high end. So once I've got that looped through, tied in a knot, and the length that I need, I'm now going to write on all of the numbers with my Sharpie marker. I'm going to take some letters to, again, dupe the look, and I'm going to paint red letters and glue them into place. Again, these letters are also from the Dollar Tree. All of these supplies are. You will need two packs, though, because each pack only has one letter. Then on the back side, I'm going to take some of this red and white ticking stripe fabric. I'm going to staple it down and then pull over the existing length of the fabric to really clean up the look and give it that high-end style. And then on the other side, 
I'm going to take a bow with the same fabric, tie it, do a dovetail tip, and glue it into place. Now make sure you pull it so it's hanging right in the center, and after that, you're ready for Christmas. This project is so much fun, and it really depends on how far you want to take it. We're going to use this wooden tree cut out, this box, this little piece of foam, and then some skewer sticks. Now, we're going to start with taking a Sharpie marker, finding the center point at the top and the bottom of this wood cut out tree, and then we're going to use a craft knife and a ruler to score three times on both sides of the tree. So you're going to do this because this is going to allow us to be able to snap the tree in half with those score lines that we're pre-cutting into the tree. This is so easy to do, just be cautious with the craft knife. Once you've got the two sides scored, three times on each side, you're going to take that wood and you're just going to simply start bending it back and forth without straining it too much. You want to let it crack easily and then you get a nice clean cut. Anything that's extra or hanging over, you're just going to take your scissors that are already kind of dull. I wouldn't use any paper scissors or fabric scissors on that and snip off the extra. Now we're going to take that little piece of foam. We're going to pop it down into the box and set the box aside so that we can start assembling our 3D trees. So we're gonna take those pieces that we broke in half and we're going to add some glue, pop it right in the center of another tree that has not been cut in half, and then we're going to take our hot glue and just simply go along the sides to strengthen up the sides a little bit more for support. Then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Remember to add that extra glue for the support and once you've got that all glued into place, you honestly could stop here. You don't even have to put it in the box. These would be so cute on a tabletop just like this. Could you just imagine this? How cute would these be? But we're gonna take it a step further because I just like doing that here on my channel. I like to use my imagination and keep pushing myself. So now I'm gonna take those long skewer sticks and I'm gonna add some hot glue in between the crevices of the tree branches and then I'm gonna flip it over on the other side and also add another skewer stick. So you can see that they are sandwiched on the opposite sides. Now I'm gonna take another set of trees that I've made look 3D, and I'm going to glue another one onto the skewer sticks. This is gonna add some height to our project, and these 3D dimensional trees, they are so expensive all over town, even with coupons they're still expensive. So already we're making this tree so cost efficient and it's just turning out so cute. I love this project so much. Now I've painted it green. You can paint it whatever color you want or even leave it the raw wood. That's totally cute too. And I'm gonna take some pliers, cut off the extra that I don't need for my skewer stick, put some glue on the foam and then just pop those sticks right down into the box. Once they're down into the box nice and secure, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of that moss that I love so much here on my channel. I just think it adds that woodland texture and it's so pretty. So I'm just gonna pop some down in there to conceal the foam, we don't wanna see that part. And then after that, this is the next part. You can stop here or you can go a step further. I'm gonna use some caulk that you can pick up at any home improvement store and I even think they have some sometimes at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on my tree and we are gonna create snow and the caulk adds so much beautiful texture and it makes it look like snow. So I'm just putting on a nice thick amount and I'm going to just brush it all over. Now you wanna make sure that you don't just cover the whole thing white because then we lose the green paint. So I'm doing brush down strokes to be able to create that snowy effect. And then again, you can stop there or you can add a little sparkle, which is what I decided to do. Once I was all done with that, I went ahead and took some of my pretty ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Plus section, and I'm just gonna wrap it around to conceal that cutout on the box and to add a little extra 
pizzazz to the box. After that, they're ready to be displayed. Wouldn't these be beautiful centerpieces on a table? This ornament is so much fun to make. There's a lot more steps, but you're gonna enjoy it, I promise. Start with a white ornament and some nice fuzzy fabric, and then we're gonna take whatever skin tone you want. I'm gonna go with a lighter skin tone, and I'm going to paint my ornament first that skin tone. Then we're gonna come in with a very pretty, soft, bubbly pink, and we're going to create some blushy cheeks that are outside playing in the snow. Once you've got those two, almost like an oval, a little bit like a circle oval spots for the cheeks, you're going to create a surprised mouth. You could also put a little smile, it's up to you, whatever you wanna do. But I went with a shocked, surprised mouth. So I made a little circle down at the bottom, and now I'm going to create two ovals for the eyes using black paint. Once that was dry, I'm gonna come back in with the end of my brush to create two little white dots for the eyes. <laughs> you can see there that I almost dripped that on my order, that ornament, that was a close one. And now once I've got my little eyes dotted on, I'm also gonna add some little white dots to the cheeks to create more of that frosty and almost like a little freckle. I thought these were so cute to add these little white dots. Then once that's all dry, I'm gonna add on an oval orange nose and again, once it's dry, because you want to make sure everything's dry before you go to the next layer or color of paint, otherwise it's just going to smudge, I'm going to add on a little shiny glossy line that's a little bit rounded towards one side. Let that all sit to the side and dry and take some fabric. I cut the fabric to wrap around the ball to make sure it's going to fit the size. I think it's probably about 10 inches long, and then the width is about... I would say five inches for the width. I rolled up the fabric so you can see that it has that beanie look where it's kind of clustered more right around the face. I put some glue across the forehead and then I glued it in to place where we need it to and then I'm going to bring it around the back and lock it all into place. Just keep pulling until you get the look that you want as you're gluing it and shift it. You have a few seconds to shift it around before the glue really locks in. Cut off any extra that you don't need because you don't want it to be super bulky, kind of clumpy towards the back. You want things to lay flat with this project. And then once you've got both sides locked into place, I'm going to come up around the top of that ornament, put a bunch of glue and then I'm gonna press the fabric down around that top hook. Once everything's glued into place for the little beanie cap, you can embellish it however you would like. I'm gonna put some greenery, a bell, a ribbon. I just think it's whatever you want to be on this darling little snow person. And then once you've got that all in place, and you can see I even added a little pine cone. Once that's all in place, now we're going to give it a frosty look. Take your Mod Podge, tap it around those frosty cheeks. So cute, right? I just had so much fun making this project. And then I'm gonna add on a little bit of this chunky glitter that I've been using a lot this season, and then my sugar glitter. So it kind of, again, gives it that really frosty look. I'm also gonna come up to the hat and goop on quite a bit of this Mod Podge so I can really get that frosty look up on the hat as well. So you can see here, I'm just kind of gooping it on with my finger. I use my hands a lot when I paint. So if that's not your thing, totally use a brush. Add on your thicker and sugar glitter, and at that point, you're ready to display it on your Christmas tree.
Pottery Barn wall art was so expensive and it actually even sold out. So I'm going to show you that you can pick up a $3 wood plaque sign from the Dollar Tree and I got some long craft sticks. Now before I jump into this project I get a lot of people asking me about these paint brushes. I picked them up from Walmart. I love them because the handle is thick, the bristles are wide and it really has a nice coverage when you're painting with it. So start by painting your plaque all white. Make sure it dries really well so that the glue can bond to the dry board. Take one of the sticks and go the corner to corner length and then come in with another stick cutting it in half or a little bit less depending on the size of your plaque or your board and you're going to create a V on both sides of that long stick. Once you've got your V's you're going to take your pliers and you're just going to keep cutting down these sticks smaller and smaller. Now you can even lower the price of this project if you go outside and you pick some really straight pretty branches from outside that could be beautiful too but keep in mind they do have these long sticks at the Dollar Tree and that might save you from having to go on a nature walk outside to collect some sticks if you don't want to do that so basically you're gonna cut these down to the size that you need keep a pencil on hand so that if you need to and you want to make those measurements a little more precise you can do that too so cut down everything you need to create this center star point for your snowflake glue them all into place and again you can see here that I'm going back and forth I keep measuring it cutting it measuring it and this is going to make it just look so beautiful also keep making sure you lift up your sign so that your snowflake doesn't look larger on one side than the other I had that happen too then glue on the tips of the snowflake which are mini V's all over and you don't have to do this part, but we've talked about this, friends. I like a little sparkle at Christmas time. So I'm adding on some Mod Podge and some glitter. And we are ready to display this beautiful wall art that cost about $4. This project is so darling and just perfect for the Christmas season if you're looking for an easy craft. I'm going to take one square wood plank, three of the tumbling stacking blocks, two wooden beads, one half round bead, and then two popsicle sticks. It's amazing how you can take a whole bunch of nothing and turn it into something. I really love that about crafting. So I'm taking my crocodile, I punched two holes, and now I'm going to create the roof of our little manger scene that we're going to turn into the most beautiful ornament. So I'm going to take that first popsicle stick, I cut it at an angle, and now I'm going to just line it up with the other one until I get the peak of the roof that I really desire the look of. I'm going to take my pencil, draw the line so that when I go to glue these together they fit nicely. And again, whenever I cut wood with scissors, I'm using really dull scissors. Do not use your best fabric scissors. It will just tear them up. I made that mistake as a teenager with my mom's scissors. She was not very happy with me. <laughs> anyway, I think now that I'm an adult, I should probably repair those scissors or get her a new nice pair for her. I think maybe I'll do that for Christmas. Surprise her with some great scissors. Now at this point, I've glued on my roof. I've painted it. I've put on my tumbling blocks. I've painted Joseph a nice slate gray. Mary a really pretty mauve color, baby Jesus a little golden color, and then I've put on all of their heads. Now at this point, you really could stop there, but friends, I just can't help myself sometimes. I love this moss. I've said it so many times. I just glued some on and I'm trimming it down so it's not so crazy. I like the look of it being kind of tidy. So now I'm going to take some of this really pretty soft gray color to create the night sky and some shading around this little nativity scene. And once I've got that done, I decided to add some little white dots for the starry night. And I'm going to take some wire, those holes we punched earlier. This is how we're going to turn it into an ornament. I took some wire, I wrapped it around my craft night because I love that coiled look of wire. I feel like it's just so farmhouse cute I don't know I, I personally really like how coiled up wire looks and it reminds me of some cute decor I had around my house growing up with my mom so I'm gonna just take that stretch out that coiled up wire 
loop it through that hole we punched with the crocodile and twist it into place on both sides. Now I'm going to add a little star button because, oh my word, it's just such a cute little detail and touch. Add a bow because I love my bows. And then at this point, I'm just going to simply come in, add a little brown paint on that wire because it adds that rustic look to it. You don't have to do this part. And you could even put like some string or ribbon, but either way, it's such a cute project to try. These cones are such a find. If you can get your hands on them, they're from the Dollar Tree. They're $1.25 for each one in their floral sections. Now, I'm going to be using two of them, the larger and smaller, three long garland 15-foot strands that they also have at the Dollar Tree, and then also a berry garland that they have at the Dollar Tree. Now, this project is so easy. You're going to take your garland, you're going to unwrap it from its coiled up circle, and you're going to just simply tie the first top piece at the top of your cone and then you're going to start coiling it down. Now I like to add a little bit of hot glue here and there so I make sure everything stays nice and tight without slipping. And I do have a tip when you're doing this, don't wrap it so tight that you're going to run out of the length to get all the way to the bottom of your cone because you wanna make sure that you have enough to get all the way to the bottom. And the one strand works perfect on the smaller cone. On the larger cone, I would recommend using two strands just because I feel like it gives it a better coverage. You don't want it to look skimpy. I think that's when it starts looking kind of homemade, <laughs> you know, a DIY fail, as a lot of people like to joke online about, is whenever it starts to look skimpy and you can see holes through it. So I like to use two on the larger one and one on the smaller one. Now when you get to the bottom, you're just simply going to cut off any extra that you don't need and then you're just going to wrap it around nice and tight at the bottom and hot glue it into place. Now at this point, it really is up to you what you want to do. You could put some fake snow on it. Now I've decided for myself because I love that country charm Christmas look where it's traditional green and red. So I'm going to take this berry garland and I'm just going to simply coil it all the way down and I'm not doing it super tight because I don't want it getting lost in the greenery. I want it to sit lightly at the surface. So I'm just kind of coiling it down like you can see here. And then when I get to the end, I'm just going to tie it into place. Now again, we could stop here. This is really cute. Or we could take it a step further, which I love to do here on my channel. I love to just keep playing with it until it has its own life and its own personality. So I'm going to simply take this bow. This is the easiest bow to make. You're going to zigzag back and forth until you get four loops. You'll have one in on one side, one the other side. You're going to flatten out the ribbon and then you're going to just simply tie it into a knot. You know, go around the tree, through the hole and then pull. So you can see here that I'm just taking that end part with the two loops and the end and I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to adjust the ribbon just a little bit and then I'll pull it tight. This is the quickest way to get a double looped bow and it looks beautiful. You would never know. <laughs> I figured this out a couple years ago so I thought I would share it today just in case you haven't tried this yet. It's a really fun technique to get a really pretty bow that's nice and full. And then all you gotta do is just fluff your bow out a little bit, kind of zhuzh it, play with it, and then cut it to the length that you want. So at this point, because this is the smaller one, I want the ribbons to be just a little bit smaller. And then of course, I can't resist, I'm gonna add a little wooden star to the top. This project is so simple. We are gonna take this adorable treat box from the Dollar Tree, two of these garden basket hooks that you can get in their garden section at the Dollar Tree, and then using a box cutter. Now friends, 
I could not find my box cutter. It's somewhere in my garage. So I'm going to just show you that I can use my scissors. I do recommend being very cautious with this because you can have your hands slip while you're holding the scissors. A box cutter is definitely much more safer, especially if you're a new crafter and you're getting used to working with blades and knives. But you can see here that I laid on to the bottom of the box this garden basket holder, this metal bar, and I just scored my line to know exactly where I want to cut. Now I've already pre-cut one so you can see what it looks like while I'm working on this one. So I start by creating my hole, and this actually cuts pretty simple, pretty easy. Once you've got that first hole, you can get your scissors or your blade, you can keep cutting down. And then I'm gonna just simply get my scissors in there and just snip. And at this point, it starts cutting really easy for me. I know I keep going off screen just a little bit. I'm so sorry. I zoomed in because I wanted you to see all the details. And sometimes I forget and I pull it close to me while I'm making my cuts and I go off screen. But you can see here on the back of the box, the treat box, I'm going up over that rounded lip just a little bit because with these metal bars, it sits nicer when you go up over the back of the little Santa sleigh box just ever so much. So that way you can get a nice clean seal when you put everything together with the glue. So once I've got the other side cut out, I'm going to go ahead and just snip off that extra. Again, you can see this is real speed right here. I took this all apart in probably about, I don't know, each hold took me maybe about two minutes to work with it just to be safe and cautious. And now I'm going to just simply take my bar and pop that into place. Now you could add some of the E6000. I didn't on this one. I'm just using hot glue and making sure that I'm going back in more on the inside of the box to conceal all that glue. You don't want to see it all over the bottom of your cute little sleigh, Santa sleigh that you're making. I like it more concealed on the inside. Now at this point, you can decide whatever it is you want to put inside this cute little Santa sleigh. You can put in some parchment paper and fill it with treats and wrap it with some cellophane and give it as a treat. You can fill it with all kinds of cute little bathroom products and put in your bathroom. I'm gonna do some greenery just because it's easy and I want you to see that you can use it as adorable home decor. Then after that, just pop whatever greenery in you want and it's ready to be displayed. I hope you're having fun so far because I sure am. This next ornament, I'm gonna be using a white ball that you can get from the Dollar Tree, these mini berries, and then some brown paint. Now we are gonna make a beautiful painted ornament where we're gonna create some twig branches going across the ornament, and it's going to be a very frosty, wintry scene with these beautiful red berries. So I'm just using a very fine tip brush and I'm taking my time going across this honestly anytime I paint anything with a brush it's so therapeutic so calming once I've got all of my branches painted I'm going to come in with my hot glue and very lightly dap onto the edge of the branches so that I can add berries now the trick that I learned was the easiest to pick these up it, it, you can use a wet sponge next to you but honestly I just licked my finger <laughs> And then I touched the berries and it picked them all up. This bag from the Dollar Tree does have a couple clusters in there already. So if I could find some, I would just pick up the cluster and just glue it on. But isn't this so beautiful? It's so easy to do. And I think anybody can do it. And then at this point, we could have left it there. But I wanted to make them look a little more frosty for a winter scene. So I'm going to add some of my Mod Podge right at the tippy tops of the berries and a little bit on the branches and then I'm going to sprinkle on this glitter. I've got a thicker glitter and a sugar glitter and I'm just sprinkling that all around and I just love how frosty this looks. So pretty. I had a lot of you asking where I got my glitter last video. I picked them up at Walmart in their craft section. 
Then at the very end, I'm just gonna add a beautiful bow to the top to really add some pizzazz, and you're ready to display it. We are going to be using these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. It is so amazing how many fun things you can make with these. And I'm going to start by taking out three of them. These go such a long way and it's just $1.25 for the pack. I love these when I see them. I definitely snatch up some for my craft room because I'm going to show you how cool this project is. You can make the most beautiful modern looking lantern and depending on how you style it it really can change up the look so i started by putting four little wood squares at the bottom for some legs and then now i'm taking four of these longer craft sticks that you can also get in their wood section and you can see that i'm doing a little bit of an angle cut with some dull old scissors this is going to allow us to put the rooftop on our lantern and it's going to give it more support for it you'll see in just a second what i'm talking about when i put the roof on so once i've got all four on i made sure that those are facing out to the proper directions so that it will support that roof when it's at an angle once i've got them glued into place and they're nice and sturdy i'm now going to come in and start adding some support and this is going to give it that modern farmhouse look that is just so cute and popular this Christmas season. So I'm just going to go three across on the inside and I'm not going to do four because you want to be able to have an opening big enough to be able to put your candle in. I'm going to use a faux candle. You'll see it at the very end where it's battery operated. Now you can see here that I'm following the exact same direction as I'm gluing in my sticks so that way on one side they're going one direction and then on the outside so the sticks don't have any issues and collide or have any weird overlapping you can see I'm coming on the outside of my lantern and going the opposite direction and gluing that into place once you've got all three sides with their sticks glued into place and you can see here what it looks like when I put my arm inside you're going to go ahead and make sure that you support those sticks. Now you can see that they're naturally wanting to pull towards the top where there's not something to keep them in place. So I kind of push the sticks apart a little bit with my hand to make sure it's allowing the glue to keep things drying in place and not kind of collapsing on me as I go. Then I'm going to come back in with that support glue that I just mentioned and I'm going to make sure that I'm giving a nice amount in between those joints and this is going to really strengthen it being that we're just using glue to adhere this together. Now we're going to move on to the roof. I'm going to measure the width of one of the planks and I'm going to just simply cut that down to size and this is going to help make the roof sturdier and be able to look really high in as if you bought it from the store. So you can see I'm just putting a bead of glue and I'm pushing that right up to the edge of that wood plank. And now I'm gonna come back in with the other one to create an angled roof. Now remember those cuts earlier that we did at an angle? This is why I was saying it's gonna give it some more support because it's going to allow that wood roof to sit on there nice and flat without it having the sticks being originally just a flat top surface. This really is going to allow it to bond together nicely. Then again, I'm going to come in with that supportive glue, add a little bit more, and then at this point, you're ready to paint it whatever color you want. I will say I did really love painting it black because after I painted it black, you really can't even see those mounted up parts of the hot glue and it makes it just look so high end without noticing any of the construction of this project. Now I'm going to take this granary garland, I'm going to twist it around into a wreath type circle and you don't have to do this but again I love to take it a little bit further here on my channel. So I'm putting in this little wreath garland and now I'm adding in some of these adorable pine cones that you can get in their floral section. I love these pine cones especially for this Christmas season because it just gives it that really pretty modern farmhouse look, very wintry. Now I'm going to add up at the very top, again you don't have to do this part, but 
I love a bow. I have never been offended by a bow. I think bows are great. <laughs> so I'm going to just zigzag back some ribbon until I've got two loops on one side, two loops on the other side. This is the easiest way to make a double looped bow. Then I'm going to gather it right in the middle, loop it around the tree and pull it through the hole. And then I kind of work down the knot into the middle and keep playing with the placement of the tails of the bow and the placement of the actual loops of the bow. Once I've got that all into place and it's nice and snug and I like the way that it looks, I'm going to just simply fluff out all those bow loops and you've got the most beautiful bow and it took like seconds to do. I figured this out a couple weeks ago and I just was thinking, oh my word, why have I not done bows like this my whole life? It's so much faster. Now I've added a little bit of greenery to the top of my lantern, added on a cute little log chimney, put on that bow and the finishing touch is to add a couple more pine cones and to add in my battery operated candlelight. I've got so many fun projects for this video today. I hope you are enjoying it. And if you are, I hope you would consider clicking the subscribe button and joining me here on my channel so that you get those notifications when videos pop up. Now I know a couple people have told me recently they weren't getting their notifications and the way you fix that is by going into past videos, watching about two or three of them that will reactivate my channel into the algorithm for your preferences and your likings. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. Wall plugins, night lights have become so popular and they are so pricey, it's ridiculous. I found these wall plugins at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 and it has this big clear plate which will allow you to basically stick whatever you want on it. Now I found this adorable metal sleigh. It also comes in red but I'm going for a neutral look so it has more of a frosty winter look and I'm going to just add some E6000 and hot glue. That's going to give you your long term and short term hold. That hot glue, it'll hold it in place as the E6000 dries over the next couple of hours. So I'm just gluing that all nice amount on there and popping on that sleigh, make sure you've got it centered before you press it down. And then you're just going to hold it into place for a few seconds so that hot glue can hold it down and it will not have any issues with popping off. Now, isn't this just the easiest, cutest project? I mean, it's not even just Pottery Barn that's selling these. It's other places like Bath and Body Works, even on Amazon. It's crazy how much they charge for these. And when I realized that they had these wall plugins, at the Dollar Tree, oh my word, the possibilities for all the fun different holidays. So basically put inside what you want. I put in some moss, some little trees, some berries, and I wanted to add a frosted look to my sleigh. So I'm putting some hot glue and then tapping on this thicker glitter. And now I'm going to also add some Mod Podge to the back of that clear plate because I want it to sparkle more. I'm gonna add that Mod Podge and then I'm gonna add some more glitter and you are ready to plug it in and light up your night. I'm gonna use this little wood ball, some twine, it's kind of more of a rope, I guess. Put some string, yarn, twine, whatever you want to call it. You can pretty much use anything. And then a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. I'm going to cut that paper in half so that it's six inches wide by 12. And now I'm going to just simply pleat it. I'm going to crease it back and forth, back and forth until I go across that six inches. 
Once you've got both of those pieces of paper done, we're going to turn it into the most beautiful, elegant angel. Now this angel can be done in all different types of paper. It is such an easy angel to create for your Christmas tree. Now you can see here that I've creased down the paper really well and I'm going to find the bending point where I want the gown versus the arms. So I've found my length that I want and you can make these as large as you want or as small as you want depending on where you fold the neckline. So you can see here I'm kind of making sure that the bottom is longer and then I'm cutting it shorter for the arms. Now you're going to go ahead and take some twine or that rope or yarn, whatever you want to use. You're going to glue it onto one side, add some more glue because we're going to take those two pieces from the paper and we're going to put them together. That string is going to be concealed in between. You're not going to see it anymore and it's going to allow this to be able to be nice and sturdy when you hang it up somewhere in your home or on your Christmas tree. So I'm going to go ahead and just pinch that all together really nicely and then I'm going to add some glue on the sides and bring down the arms. Now I will say when I first made this, I made the arm sleeves a little too long so I did go back and trim them so you'll see at the end they are a little bit shorter. So just make sure you get the length of your sleeves right before you glue them down into place. Now that yarn, string, twine, whatever it is that you used, even um, embroidery thread, you could use that too. I'm going to go ahead and just slide my wood bead on, add some glue, and then slide the bead down towards the collar of that gown. I'm going to now use a piece of wire so I can make my cute little halo. And you can leave this part out. It's up to you, really, how you want to decorate your little angels. I wanted a little halo on my angel. So I'm going to take some wire. I twist it around the end of my craft knife. And then I just cut it down to the size I need to glue that right down into the round bead because there's already that opening which works out perfect. Then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to embellish by adding a bow. But you really could do whatever you want with these and really customize them. They're so much fun to make and so easy. All right, we're going to use five of these wood planks and as well as eight of these squares. We are going to be creating a beautiful high-end wood box that you can use honestly for pretty much anything. I'm going to be using it as a table decor piece where I'm going to put beautiful red berries in it for this Christmas season. So I'm starting by taking four of the squares. I glued them to one of the planks right in their corners and now I'm using that as a support system to glue to glue on the sides. Once I've got those four around the side, I'm now going to take the last four squares and I'm going to glue those right into the box. Now you could use some other things besides the wood squares. I knew that I wasn't going to be looking at the inside of the box, so I ended up using the wood squares for really strong supports. If you wanted to use this as like a gift box, you could take these wooden dowels and use those as supports in the middle. That would work too. So you can see here that I'm cutting down those craft wooden sticks for supports on the side and to cover up that seam where the wood doesn't perfectly line up. And now I'm going to paint it all white to give it a nice, pretty, fresh Christmas look. Once that's done, I'm going to put some foam inside of that box, glue it into place, and I'm going to add in these berries. I had a couple people ask me, how do I store these berries? I actually have what I call a flower tower. It's this huge tower. I'll show it in my craft room tour that's coming very soon. And I just store them out in the open all year long. And then if they get dusty at all, I just dust it over really quick. But really, it doesn't do that. Now, if any of the berries pop off, I do like to take a little bit of red paint. And I just tap the tops of those spots where the foam might be showing. And it looks brand new again. So that's how I store my berries. At this point, I've added a ticking stripe fabric bow around it. Found an old ornament that I had on hand from the Dollar Tree. And this looks so high-end and so beautiful to put out for Christmas.
This project is a little bit more in the effort department, but it's only because there is one rope that we're gonna uncoil and it does take about 10 minutes to do it. But overall, this is a really easy project as well. I would recommend having someone help you uncoil the rope because then it will make it go a lot quicker and you're not fighting with it trying to not back up on itself as you're trying to untwist this rope. So the reason why we're going to be untwisting it is because we want two different textures. We want the rope that is wrapped tightly and then we want a rope that is just a straight strand. So once you've got it untwisted you will have three sections and we're only going to be using two of them today so the third one we're going to put to the side for something else. Now for the next rope, the second one out of the three that we're going to be using, we're not going to untwist that. And then at this point, we're going to take one of the straight ones that is untwisted and the other nautical rope that is twisted. And we're going to take one of these foam wreath rings from the Dollar Tree. All of these supplies can be found at the Dollar Tree. And then we're going to just simply glue that down into place. Now at this point, we're going to take that rope and we're gonna to continue to wrap it around and around and around, keeping that same pattern where we want the straight one in between the wrapped rope. And this is the thing, I saw this wreath online. <laughs> it was so extremely expensive and I knew that we could do it for a fraction of the cost, which is what we're doing today. We're doing this wreath for about $6 versus the hundred dollars that I saw online for. Now the trick with the rope, as you're wrapping it at the halfway point, you're gonna see that one of the twisted ropes is going to get you about halfway around the wreath form and you're gonna to have to get out the next one and the second straight strand. But what you're gonna do is you're going to continue to compress the inner circle rope so that stays nice and tight and then the outer is a little bit looser, which is going to give you this beautiful pattern. Isn't this so cool? Now at the very end, you're gonna have a little spot where you're still gonna see that green foam. We don't wanna see that. So that third rope, that's when it's gonna come back into play, the one we untwisted, that extra one. And you're just gonna wrap it around to conceal it. Now at this point, we're gonna add in some greenery. I added two ferns, and I'm coming back in with some of this green garland pick that you can get from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to keep playing with it. I like to lift up my wreaths so I can see them in different views because if it's just laying flat on the table, sometimes your garlands and your greenery, your flowers, all the things you're putting on it, it can come out a little flat. So I do like to lift it, kind of look at it from different angles. Now at this point, I'm adding in some of these frosted berries. I just think they're so beautiful with the green and the red, so traditional. I love those colors for Christmas. And I'm gonna add a sweet gingham bow right in the middle. Now we can leave it there because this is so adorable, or we can take it a step further, which is what I always love doing. So with that extra third rope again, we are going to just tie a knot, slide over about two inches, and then tie another knot. Now the reason why we're doing this is I like to have a nice clean look. I don't want to distract from the rope at the top and all that work we just did. So I'm going to create a hook on the back side of the wreath using this extra piece of rope. So you can see that those two knots are going to keep the rope from untwining or twisting or fraying, whatever. And I'm going to just glue it down. And now I have this nice loop that's on there that can hook onto my wreath holder for my door. Now these bells are from the Dollar Tree as well. You get nine in a pack. I'm gonna be using about five of them. You can use as many as you want. And then I'm gonna take some twine and I'm going to just thread it through and I'm gonna tie three knots so it's on there nice and secure. Cut off that extra piece I don't want and then take a little bit of hot glue. Sorry I was off screen for this part just a little bit. And then I'm going to just make sure that hot glue locks in those knots. And then I'm gonna pick up my bells, be careful because they will tangle. Tie them in a knot once I get them all in the position I want. And then I'm going to just simply glue them in place. You do not have to add the bells, but I think the bells are just so beautiful. And it just brings in that Christmas spirit when someone hears it as it jingles on the door. I just love the way it looks and I love the way it sounds. 
So now I'm just simply gluing it in place, cutting off that extra piece that you don't want at the top, and then again, adding some more glue. I feel like the finishing touches is where sometimes people rush, and these last little bits is how you make it look high-end and that it came from a store. Candle cozies are another thing that are super popular this season and basically all it is, is it's a mini wreath that you put at the bottom of your candle and they're selling for so much money. Oh my word, don't buy them. You can make them. So I'm going to take three of these twist tie garlands that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree and then you're going to just basically twist three of them together or more if you want it to be even thicker. You don't want it to be too thick that you know it's gonna cause an issue with sliding it on so I'm gonna just do three and I'm twisting the ends so it's one continuous long chain and then I'm gonna just fluff it out a little bit I'm just fluffing it out and then I'm gonna just take it back off once I've got that tied in place for the size the width that I need and the extra I'm gonna keep wrapping it around and twist that into place so now at this point you've got your candle cozy shape that you need your mini wreath and you're going to decorate it however you want you can put some frosted greenery tips on it some pine cones some berries like florals that match the colors that you're doing mini poinsettias whatever you want that's the fun part about these is you can basically customize them for the look and the style that you're going for for your home so once you've got those things all glued into place you then basically just slide it back onto your candle and you have the cutest look now total cost for this was about I don't know 375 but honestly I had all these things on hand because it was the greenery and the pine cones and the berries and that's pretty much it you have a adorable candle to put out on a shelf or a table somewhere in your home this Christmas season. I'm gonna be using this milk jug that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and their Dollar Plus section that was $3. You can find these sometimes at thrift stores, but I love this one because it already had the vinyl work on it. Now we're gonna be taking some foam and putting that down in there with some hot glue to secure it into place. And then we're gonna be building up the foam because what we're gonna do next, once we've got all this foam in place and nice and tight and snug, we are gonna take two of these Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree and we are going to turn it into a very high-end looking Christmas tree. Now I know I didn't show this Spanish moss at the very beginning, but I love this stuff and I think it's a great filler and I think a lot of people have this in their craft room. So I just thought I would share that you don't have to do this option. You could honestly put at the bottom whatever you want to conceal that foam. But I like using a little bit of that moss in there because I just think it adds that pretty Christmas texture in there that you would see at the bottom of a Christmas tree out in nature. Now I'm going to take these two trees that are a dollar from the Dollar Tree. Well, a dollar twenty-five now. And I'm gonna pop off the bottoms and we don't need the supports. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna take these two trees and flatten out their branches so that we can zip tie them together. Once we've got it zip tied nice and snug at the bottom, kind of a little bit above the bottom, a couple branches up, I'm gonna zip tie that there with a black zip tie. You can also get those at the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna come up almost all the way to the top of where the rod is inside that the branches are all tied to. Zip tie it there as well so it's nice and snug. Now the reason why I like doubling up these trees is it just overall makes it look a lot thicker, more fuller, more high end. One tree by itself you could do it, but I just always think it looks kind of skimpy and I don't like it as much. So then I'm gonna just work that down into the foam and you can see how that moss in there really is just concealing the foam so you don't see it and it just makes it look so beautiful. Then at this point, I'm just gonna fluff it and it's ready to be displayed in your home for Christmas.
For this project, we're going to take an Easter egg. That's right, an Easter egg. <laughs> I went back in my Easter bin and I pulled out one of these eggs. I've got a bunch of them from last spring. I'm going to take it and paint it a really light, pretty gray color. And once I've got about two or three coats of that on, I'm going to take some brown nautical rope and I'm going to just wrap it around the midway point of that egg going to the top. I'm just going to coil it around and around and around until everything's locked into place how I'd like it to be. Tap in that last little bit, cut off any extra that you don't need, and then you're going to get to embellish the top of it because we're making these darling, easy to make acorns. If you are going for a more na natural nature look for your Christmas tree this year, this is a really cute thing to add to your Christmas tree. Now I'm going to add some leaves from leftover projects from greenery picks that I had on hand. I'm going to add some of those to the top. And then once I've got that on there, I'm going to add on some twine with a knot for my ability to hang it up on a Christmas tree. So you can see here the nice little hangers up there. And then a bunch of cute little pine cones all over it. This next DIY is so simple. I've actually spent a lot of time in the past building one of these pop-up stands for signs and this one is just so adorable. It was in the dollar plus section. It was five bucks. I totally think it was worth the money because I have spent about that in the past trying to make it myself. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this pop-up sign and I'm going to show you how you can switch out the artwork using one of these calendars that they have from the Dollar Tree. I love these calendars because the artwork in it is just so beautiful and it's really easy to be able to just rip out some artwork, cut it down to size, and then you can change out your image every single month that you want to on your little pop-up sign that you have displayed at an entry table when you're coming into your house or you can display it in the kitchen if you want to use the backside for a menu. That's what I'm going to be doing with mine for this Christmas season because I'm planning on hosting a couple of parties this year. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking that artwork and I'm just pressing down with my nail along the sides of the sign so that I know about right where I need to cut. Then as straight as I can, and keep in mind you could use a paper trimmer but I'm just gonna do mine freehand. And I'm gonna cut that straight line. And then you're gonna notice that it's gonna have a little bit of a space at the bottom. I wanted to conceal that a little bit more so I'm going to take some red cardstock, pop that down first, and then put on my artwork. Now I'm using a double-sided adhesive. I will link all of my tools from this video down below in the description box if you're interested in any of them. I love this adhesive. It's called a tape gun and it's my favorite because it can have a lot of adhesive at one time. Then I'm simply just going to pop my artwork into place. And I don't like that you can see the nail hole from the calendar, so I've decided I'm going to take it a little step further and I'm going to add a little bow at the top. And that's just going to go right above where that circle is to conceal that hole just a little bit so I don't see that whenever I'm looking at it and using it for parties. So you can see I'm just putting a tiny little dot. I tied a cute, sweet little gingham bow and I'm just going to pop that right on there. Now I like to always control where my bow tails go, especially when there's wordage on a sign. So I'm going to just cut that down to the size I need to and then I'm going to take the tiniest dot of hot glue and I'm just going to put a little tiny dot and then just press down that tail and it will keep it in place and will look so perfect for your party. Then on the back side you can add whatever you want to the chalkboard piece and it's ready to be used. All right, now we're going to take one of these wood planks. I'm going to cut off about two and a half inches, and then I'm going to use my craft knife and score three times on both sides. That's going to allow me to be able to snap it really easily. Any extra wood hanging over, I'm just going to take some dull old pair of scissors, snip off that extra, 
and then just quickly sand it so that there's not anything pokey on it. Now we're going to take a shish kebab stick. I love this project because I want you to see that it does not take a lot to create something beautiful. I'm basically using a little piece of wood and sh some shish, shish kebab sticks. Wow, that was a hard for, one for me to get out. And then some paint. And all together, it's going to make the prettiest ornament. Now you can see that I've downsized those sticks to make it look like a Christmas tree, painted them a sage green, painted the trunk brown. I added a little button to the top. I mean, really, this is the easiest ornament and it's just so, so adorable. Added some ribbon on the back, some moss at the base of the tree, and then the last thing I'm gonna just add on this bow using some ticking stripe fabric. And that's pretty much it. You're ready to display. This project is so whimsical and darling to have in your home, especially if you love snowmen. I'm gonna take three of these planks. Using my crocodile, I'm gonna punch some holes out. On two of the planks, I'm gonna do four, one in each corner. And then on the third plank, I'm only gonna punch out two holes on the same side. So you can see here two is on this one and the other ones have four. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and paint these all white. Now, if you wanted to make a really cool gift, at this point, you could ditch the idea and not do a snowman. You could end up doing a really beautiful display of family photos on these wood planks or something with really neat sayings that are memorable and special to you and your family as a gift for a loved one. Now, I'm gonna use some wire I'm going to fasten those holes together. You can see here that they are all situated where the very last one doesn't with the missing those extra holes. That's the very bottom because we want that to be nice and clean where there's not another one that's jointing together. And then on the other side where there's the extra holes, that's going to be where we have our hang up wire to be able to hang it up on a hook, a wall, a Christmas tree, whatever you want. So I ended up using wire, you could use twine, you could use embroidery thread, you can use a lot of different things to combine these holes all together. Once I've got all my wire in place, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of distressing first. You could always skip the distressing, I know it's kind of hit and miss for a lot of people, but I like a little distressing. I'm gonna add on the two cute eyes, some dots for the coal smile, and for the carrot nose, I didn't want to just do a straight line across like you can see sometimes in decor. I made it a little bit more rough and bumpy looking. I thought that was a really cute detail, it made the carrot look a little more dimensional. Now I'm going to take some of these darling wood cutouts that are snowflakes. I thought that this was such a fun touch to put on our little snow person we're making here. And I'm going to just add on Mod Podge after I've got those glued in place. And this is going to allow us to bond on my glitter I've been using a lot this season. I picked this glitter up at Walmart. I had a lot of people asking me over this last couple of weeks. It's in their craft section. It's a sugar glitter and a chunkier glitter. And those two combined make the most beautiful frosty texture. You can see that I added some of that Mod Podge to the buttons and as well to certain sides of my little snow person, snowman, and the top of the carrot nose. Once those are all done, I'm gonna add on a bow. You can use any kind of bow you want to match your decor. I really love the red and white for Christmas time, so I'm using this ticking stripe fabric. And then after that, and all of the glitter has been put in place, you really can customize this however you want and just have fun with it.
We're gonna start off with this round ornament that's actually flat. You can see here that it's not your typical round ball ornament, and I picked it up from the Dollar Tree. Now, it's really simple. We're gonna fill the inside with some of this faux snow and then put the cap back on it. Now we're gonna take out three different shade tents of the color green, and we're gonna start by putting a straight line down the ornament and then start to create some branches wider at the base, smaller at the top, and then you're just gonna make little leaves all over them with that first green color. Now, this is something that anybody honestly can do. The tip and trick is you wanna make sure you're using a small paintbrush. The bigger the paintbrush, the bigger the strokes. So just think, the smaller the paintbrush, the smaller the strokes. Once you've got all the green on, the first color, you're gonna come on with an apple green, and you're going to just simply make little lines going over it. I don't go over every single leaf because we want that different variation in color. And then I'm gonna come in with a much lighter green and I'm going to just continue to add on that texture. Once I've got that color done and everything has dried, I'm gonna go ahead and come back in with some white and very lightly define the branches, making it look like snow kind of landed there. Now with the back of my brush, I'm gonna take my paint. I'm gonna use my orange, yellow, and red and create little dots all over it. Oh my word, wreaths are so expensive on Pottery Barn. Friends, it's amazing what you can do with a 20 inch round ring from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna take this ticking stripe fabric and I am going to make sure I pull off all those extra threads because I like to snip my fabric and then rip it all the way down following the thread of the fabric. And after that I'm gonna leave probably about 10 inches dangling down, and then I'm going to start wrapping it around. This is the quickest, easiest way to make the most beautiful wreath, and this is duping one that I saw over on their website where it was full and thick and beautiful, and I'm gonna show you that all you have to do is pick whatever scarf or fabric you have on hand that you'd like to twist around your wreath form, and then you're gonna pick up a wreath over at Costco. They have them there for $19.99 and you're just going to basically layer them on top of each other and you are going to save yourself about a hundred bucks. It's crazy. Like I just, I can't even, I know that it takes some time to manufacture these things, but friends, I feel like the prices sometimes are just crazy. I love Pottery Barn. Like I love their style, but again, I want you to see that you can have a beautiful home and not spend a lot of money and be conscious about where you're putting your investment of money and time for your family and still have a beautiful home. So I'm just, I basically tied a knot on the fabric once I was done twisting it all the way down. I added on some berries, some greenery, and then I wanted to beef it up some like I saw in my inspiration. I'm adding on a little bit of moss and then a beige bow that has this glitter on it, again, from the Dollar Tree, this ribbon that you can pick up from there. And then the last thing is bells because they are hot, hot, hot this season. They're pretty much on so many things. Oh, one tip, don't forget to touch up those berries from the Dollar Tree if any berries pop off. That makes it look high end and finished. So once you've got that bell glued on, you're ready to assemble it onto your greenery wreath from Costco all together, this cost me probably about $26 versus the $150 price tag I saw online. Oh, what a savings, friends. Give it a try, you're gonna love it. All right, we're gonna take another one of the white ornaments from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna cover it completely with Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna take this faux snow that you can also get from the Dollar Tree. Pretty much everything in all my videos, unless I say differently, it's from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna take this 
faux snow and I'm going to just basically sprinkle it all over where I put a nice coat of Mod Podge. This is going to create a snowy, beautiful snowball. And now I'm going to add some greenery picks to the top. You can honestly decorate this however you want with a certain color that you're doing, a certain theme that you're doing, but it just adds the prettiest texture to any Christmas tree. So I'm going to add on some greenery picks. I'm going to add on some mini pine cones, and then I'm going to add on some more hot glue and some of these berries. Again, all of these supplies came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to sprinkle on those little berries and that's going to really add some pop, some color to the pine cones. I just think it's so cute. The last thing I'm going to do is add a pretty red bow. This last project is so fast. We are going to take one of these placemats, we're gonna pop off the tag, and then we're going to pick a fabric of our liking. Since I am using Ticking Stripe Red and White this season, I thought this would be a really cute backside to this little pillow we're going to make. Now, if you are a fan of sewing and you know how to sew, I would highly recommend doing that first. But if you're not, you can always hot glue it on. If you are going to sew, I would recommend undoing the stitch on the placemat to give you a little bit more working room to be able to flip the fabric inside out. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just simply glue on this backside. It holds really well, and the trick to that is you want to take the glue and you want to massage it into the fabrics. That is going to lock them in so it doesn't come apart on you. So once you've got it all pushed and locked into place, you're gonna go around all three sides but leave the top open so that you can stuff it with some batting. Now I happen to buy my batting at the end of every Christmas season. I pick up the snow fluff that they use for those home displays. I get it so cheap and it lasts me all year long. Then in the end, you're just gonna seal up that edge cut off any extra fabric that's hanging over to clean up your line and you are all done and you have the most beautiful pillow that only cost about a dollar fifty We are going to take some flocked greenery, some ribbon, some burlap, some more greenery garland, some batting, and some berries. And I'm going to start with a piece of burlap, the white burlap. I picked this up at Joann's. I had a lot of people asking me, but honestly, you can get it anywhere. So I'm doubling up the fabric. You can see that I cut at that fold line that comes off of the bolts of fabric. I cut a piece that's probably about 12 inches long, and then I'm going to add the glue in between those two pieces, and then I'm gonna fold it in half, glue it in place, and then fold it in half again to create a little gunny sack, a little fabric bag. So you can see here that the sides are glued once it's all nice and dry. I'm gonna take it and flip it inside out. Now the reason why this project is so cute because you can customize the front of these bags with whatever you want. And then I'm gonna add some batting inside the bag and then at this point, you can fill the bag with whatever you want. It really is up to you and how you want to put things in it. You could put little mini teddy bears and little mini boxes of toys and presents. You can make it look like Santa's sack with his goodie bags that he uses to deliver. You can fill it with little Christmas trees. You can fill it with flowers that match your tree that you're doing, whatever you want. I'm gonna go with this frosted greenery just to show you that this is really pretty and elegant as well. 
I tied a knot around it and then I put an extra bow on top and then last I'm just putting in these berries to just, you know, add a little color to it. If you don't have a flock tree, using this frosted garland is really pretty and it'll add that snowy look to your Christmas tree. And then I'm going to just add in a little bit more greenery to contrast that color and then add a spot to be able to hang it up on the back. We are gonna be using this glass vase, a terracotta pot, and one of these LED battery operated candle lights. Start by taking some white paint and put a coat over your terracotta pot. This dries pretty quickly, but if you're having an issue with it drying or taking too long, you can use a heat gun. I love using my heat gun because not only does it dry paint really quickly, it also helps me take off those stickers once you heat up the adhesive on the stickers. Now I'm gonna take my E6000 and I'm gonna take my hot glue for a long-term, short-term hold. The hot glue locks it in place quickly while that E6000 takes time to dry. Now don't forget to flip it over because there is a hole in that terracotta pot and that glue will want to come out onto your craft table and make a giant mess. So once I got that bottom on, I flipped it over and let it dry for a little bit. Now I'm just adding some greenery and some berry garland because I just think that that's so pretty for Christmas. You can honestly just put a bow if you want to with a ribbon, whatever you would like at this point. It's so many different possibilities that you have to create and decorate this. Now I'm gonna also add on these three darling little berries and then for my candle, I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom base go down in there with my pliers to make sure it doesn't flip over on accident and kind of guide it in and glue it into place. This is gonna allow you to have that base in there nice and secure. It also cleans up the inside of the glass so you don't see that terracotta in there on the glass because you can see that it's clear see-through. So now I'm gonna come in with some brown paint, give it a little bit of a rustic charm look with some distressing, add on a ticking stripe bow, and I'm just gonna pop that right underneath the berries because I just think that is so darling. And at this point, it's ready to light up and put on a table. We're gonna take some ticking stripe red fabric, but you can honestly use whatever fabric you want, and one of these ring hooks that you use for school supplies. I'm gonna go ahead and take my fabric, make a bunch of snips at the top, and rip my fabric downwards. We want it to look a little more rustic because this is gonna be a very country chic type project for our Christmas tree. Once I've got enough strips cut, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them down to size, and you want your sizes to be about five inches long. Now I'm going to take my fabric, and you can tie a knot by running it through. So the easiest way to honestly do it is by taking the fabric, folding it in half, running that loop through the ring, opening the hole, grabbing the ends, the tails of that fabric, and then pulling it nice and tight. And then once you've repeated that going all the way around your ring, I'm gonna add on some twine. I just tied a knot, and then I'm gonna glue it into place and kind of twist it a little bit to make sure it all locks in nice and tight. And then now at this point, you can embellish this however you want. You could leave it like this where it's just the fabric, but I think it would be so pretty to add a little bit more. You know, I can't help myself. We can stop there or we can keep going. So I'm gonna add on this little garland wreath that I made and I'm gonna just glue that right around where the opening the circle is. And then I'm going to also add on these darling little red berries. And they also have some frosted ones at the Dollar Tree, the red berries. I think they're so cute either way. 
And then the last is just a little bow. I had this idea pop in my head. I thought, how cute would it be if I took these square planks and I turned them into a stack of tumbling Christmas presents. So I'm taking one of these wood bases that a plaque that you can get from the Dollar Tree in their wood section. I drilled down two holes just to make the sticks a little stronger and I glued them into place. Then I took these three squares. I painted one a really bright fun green, one white, and then the other one I'm putting on white burlap and cutting it down so you have this really pretty texture on the wood. I really love how that turned out. Once the glue is dried on my wood base and my sticks that are gonna have the presents go up it, so this looks very store high-end looking, I'm gonna paint that all black and then set it aside again. Now I'm gonna take the back of my brush and some black paint and I'm gonna create a really cute staggered polka dot look on one of the presents. There was something about doing this that reminded me of like Kate Spade. I don't know what it is, but I just, I love polka dots and I thought this was a really fun detail to that present in particular. Then you can see at this point that I'm adding on some bows to my presents. This is gonna add all kinds of fun texture and you really could customize this however you want. On the front of my burlap present, I'm gonna add this pretty green silky ribbon and a little bow right in the middle. And then on the polka dot, I'm gonna add the red ribbon by wrapping it around and adding a big bow to the top. And the green present, I used some ticking stripe fabric that I had on hand that I've been using all this Christmas season. And then I'm gonna add a little wreath right tucked underneath that big red bow I think these three presents are so adorable. You really could customize them to whatever your home decor colors are. At this point, I'm going to start by gluing on the middle present first, because I'm gonna kind of make it off-centered. You can see that it's tilted and tipping over to the side like a stack of presents just kinda going wonky and tumbling all over the place. Then I put on the bottom present, and then the last, I'm trimming up the bow once I knew the length I wanted for the top present, and I'm gonna twist that to the other side. I really love the idea of them going back and forth, kind of twisting, making them look very topsy-turvy for a cute stack of presents. Now at this point, because I like the farmhouse look, I'm gonna come in and distress it a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but I love that different dimension to that distressed look you could leave it as is and not do the distressing. I'm gonna take some green garland, twist two of them together. These are those ties that you can use to add up your garland to like a banister, a mantle, you use them to twist things together. I'm gonna to use those to wrap around the bottom of my cute stand that I have here, add on some darling pine cones to the top red bow and down to the base. And at this point, friends, this was so much fun to make. Leave a comment down below to let me know which one you liked, which one you think you will try. I had so much fun making all of these 35 projects to share with you today. I hope that they have inspired you to try crafting and using supplies from the Dollar Tree to help you stay on a crafter's budget. And I wanna thank you all again for coming and visiting with me today, stopping in my craft room and allowing me to share some of these ideas with you. If you're new and returning and haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, do so that you don't miss videos coming out every Tuesday and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That way you get notified the second they go live. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for being a longtime friend here in my craft room. And until the next episode, bye.